like the video and subscribe right now, or she will be in your bed tonight. Ask Reddit, what is one story you will never tell your parents? When my twin brother and I were kids we watched an old war drama that made the claim that if you wanted to beat somebody up without leaving a bruise, you should hit them with a sack of oranges. That got us discussing other methods of beating somebody up without leaving marks including batteries in a sock and punching people through a phone book. Being bored we decided to test them, but we unfortunately did not have any sacks of oranges or large quantities of batteries. We did, however, have a phone book. I got to go first. I placed the phone book on his arm and punched it as hard as I could. This should be obvious now, but punching a phone book hurts like hell. It is essentially punching a brick. He barely felt it. After some further discussion, we agreed that punching somebody through a phone book is functionally equivalent to just hitting somebody with a phone book so why not do that instead? By this time we had entirely lost the plot and decided to aim for the head this time so that we would be sure to feel it. Since I had punched him first, it was his turn to go first. We agreed ahead of time that no matter what, if he hits me, I get to do the same after. He winds back and clobbers me in the side of the head with the phone book. In that instant, I literally felt my skull accelerating, colliding with my brain, before it could match the speed. It knocked me out cold for 5 minutes. When I came around, I immediately demanded my turn. He tried to chicken out, but fair is fair. He went down for several minutes as well. When he woke up, we agreed to never mention our adventure to our parents. TL, DR, preteen boys, boredom, and bad information are a dangerous combination. I'm female, and I grew up with super strict Catholic parents, and went to a Catholic primary plus high school. My mother was, and still is very strict. She told me every day that I wasn't allowed to touch a drop of alcohol until I had turned 21, when the legal drinking age in my country is 18. Seeing or even being friends with boys was out of the question. Her logic was that it all starts with friendship. So one night I was overseas with a bunch of friends in a hotel room. Having never drank alcohol before, I didn't really know my limits. So I kind of just went for it. Several shots of whiskey and vodka later, I suddenly found myself with three other girls, with things getting kind of hot and heavy. The next morning, I woke up very hungover and very naked. Not exactly something I'll be telling my mother when she asks me what I got up to on my holiday. At a family gathering we were sitting around with my now late grandmother telling stories about when my dad and his brother were kids. My dad told a story about how my grandmother went in to go shopping and left him and his brother in the car. They were about 8 and 10 years old. They decided to take the car for a joy ride around the block and when they got back the parking spot was taken. They had to park it somewhere else and spent hours convincing my grandmother that she had really parked there. After he told that story, my grandmother, who at the time was in her late 80s, jumped up, her eyes here as bright as can be, and she yelled, I knew I didn't park there. When I was 16, a single woman I babysat for took me to Florida with her, she was in her 30s. One night, after the kids went to sleep, we left the hotel and walked over to a nightclub across the street. We got white girl wasted with two rich brothers from LA. They bought us shots of tequila and god knows what else all night. Sometime during the night slash early morning hours, they invited us to go for a ride in their limo. We said we would come look, that's all. We didn't want to leave the kids for too long. The brothers then started to get aggressive when we said we wouldn't go back to their hotel with them. They tried to pull us into the limo. A man dressed as Jack Sparrow watched the whole scene go down and intervened with an awesome replica sword. I'm not kidding. He raised his sword and proclaimed we were his and that he would escort us back to our hotel. He walked us back and bid us a good night. We woke up with killer hangovers the next day. Edit, yes, I know leaving the kids was a very poor decision, even though it was only for a few hours. I was 16. I didn't think the situation through. Obviously, I learned my lesson. After that night, I didn't leave the kids when the mother went out partying. I had to step up to be the adult after that. I get it. When I was 15, I hired a prostitute. Backstory, I was a lonely kid, fat, going through depression. My mom was at work, and I had hours to myself. I went to the store, 
there was this one lady who was on the corner, and without really realizing how old I was, asked if I wanted to go out on a date. We kind of awkwardly stared at each other for a couple of seconds before, in my totally socially awkward mind, asked her if we could play board games during this date. She looked at me funny, but actually agreed. So we went back to my house and she looked surprised slash maybe relieved when I pulled out a few board games. For the couple of hours, we played chess, she won, and Monopoly, I won. It was honestly a lot of fun. We talked about nothing important, but it was nice to just talk yeah no. Eventually, she had to leave, and when I asked how much, she refused the money. I honestly wish I could find her again, to give her my thanks. Well, when I lived with my parents I used to sneak out, to go to church solely, because I knew it would piss off my father, that I didn't buy into his create your own reality cult. He flat out told me that it was okay, if I wanted to smoke things, drink things, or snort things, that he would buy me alcohol, if I asked for it, and that he'd sign for me to get a tattoo, if I wanted one. So I rebelled by going to church, although I went in black leggings and combat boots, because there was only so far I could bend. Edit. Clarification. Not sure it worked. On a trip to Canada, my bro and I did something very stupid, while our mom and stepdad were out. There was about a gallon and a half of lemonade in the refrigerator so obviously we had to drink it all in one sitting. We poured it into six glasses, three for each of us, and decided that we should see who could finish them first. As soon as we finished, we both had the same feeling. Out of nowhere I just puked on my brother. And in his disgust and acid filled belly, he puked on me. And we just stood there, puking on each other for 5 minutes straight. We had to sneak out in our underwear and throw out our clothes in the dumpster near where we were staying. We cleaned the puke from the floor very very well and took showers. Not as bad as the other stories here, but the only one I could come up with. A certain family guy clip comes to mind. Alright, I could probably tell my parents this one and we'd laugh about it, but for years I was terrified of being found out somehow. It was the mid 90s, and I was in 5th grade, which would have made me about 11 or so. I was a latchkey kid, and had about 45 minutes to myself, after getting home from school before my mom would get home from work, followed shortly by my other siblings. Let me tell you, those 45 minutes of alone time every afternoon was perfect at that age. So on this particular day, I'd stopped at a 7 to 11 on my way home with some of my friends, and bought a cherry slurpee. I got home, threw my stuff down, and flopped onto the couch with my drink to watch TV. I was breaking the cardinal no food or drink on the couch rule, but I was old enough to be responsible, right? Wrong. Not 5 minutes, after I sat down I somehow knocked the slurpee out of my own hand, and spilled it all over the carpet. The carpet that was off white, and had been installed not even 6 months prior, to make matters worse. I instantly scooped up as much as I could, and ran to get paper towels, but there was no way to disguise a giant red stain on the new carpet. I was pretty much ducked, and I had no idea what to do. My mom was going to be home in something like 20 minutes and I would never hear the end of it. Just at that moment, right as I'm about to freak out over this large and very noticeable stain, the phone rings. I grab it, answer without thinking, and only half listen as a telemarketer introduces herself, and asks for my parents. It sounded like a middle aged woman, and within seconds I had an idea. Do you have any kids? I practically shouted into the phone, cutting her off. There was a pause on the other end. I'm sure she was either contemplating her life choices, or trying to decide if I was a young sounding serial killer. Yes. She answered it like a question, but I barely noticed, because I started talking again instantly. Then you're a mom and you'll know what to do. I quickly described the situation for her, home alone, cherry slurpee on white carpet, mom will be home soon, the whole spiel. I finished with one last plea, please help. She stayed very calm on the phone. She told me to go to where my mom kept cleaning supplies, and tell her exactly what we had. I ran to the laundry room, read the names of all the bottles to her, and she told me what to take. She talked me through the whole thing on the phone, spray with this, dab with a wet towel, spray with this other thing, let it sit, spray again with something else, dab some more, and eventually at the end I was on my hands and knees scrubbing the carpet as hard as I could with a stiff bristle brush the telemarketer on the phone, 
had told me to use. The whole thing took maybe 5 minutes, and at the end the carpet looked like new. It was amazing. It was like I'd never even had a slurpee in the whole house. The woman, I don't remember her name, but by this point she and I were on a first name basis, gave me one final piece of advice before she had to go, which was to go throw the slurpee cup away in my neighbor's trash can to eliminate all the evidence. With that, she said that her manager was about to throw a fit and she had to leave. I thanked her profusely, told her she saved my life, maybe mentioned once or twice that I was in love with her already, and then it was over. My mom walked in the door about 10 minutes later, and by that point the carpet was already dry. There was a really faint discoloration there that remained for years, but as far as I know nobody ever noticed, or if they did, nobody ever said anything while I was around. I played it cool for the rest of the day, still not quite sure if my parents could read on my face what I'd done, but they never said anything. Within a few days I was able to relax, by that point, I figured I was in the clear no matter what. I obviously never got to speak to that woman again, but I'll never forget her. She was a true saint, and she probably saved my life that day, or at the very least she saved my, but from the spanking I'm sure I would have received. A week before I graduated high school I was kicked out of my parents house and spent the night on at a boat party in Sausalito CA. At this party a drunk bitch pushed me off the dock when I was taking a leak and I lost my phone, my cigarettes and my car keys, which, incidentally, belonged to my parents. The next morning I had my friend drive me back to my parents, housed in his car, so I could sneak in and grab the valet key, then drove me back so I could take the car to work. A year later, I went on a trip with my friends in this same car to the north of California, close to the Oregon border, so they could purchase some weed. They bought it and stuck it in the trunk of the car and drove back. Around 3 in the morning the next day, the 4th of July, 2009, we were pulled over by the highway patrol officer who pulled us out and began to search the car. He took my key and went to open the trunk of the car. But because I had lost my original key a year ago, and because I had to use the valet key. And because the valet key doesn't open the trunk of a Chrysler Sebring 98. They never found it. But, they did take the box of Enterman's powder donut holes from the front seat. My parents are very conservative, very cautious, and very old fashioned. Earlier this year I managed to get a solid two week vacation. I couldn't decide where to go, so I was just using kayak and google flight search to find cheap flights and then google the country and local stuff to do. I found a flight to Egypt for pretty cheap and always wanted to see the pyramids, so I bought a flight there. Then I decided to try couch surfing. I stayed with an awesome guy and his mom. He picked me up from the airport, showed me around, traveled with me to Sine. We went diving, snorkeling, adving, lots of stuff. We ended up hitchhiking in the area as our ride fell through not the safest thing to do anywhere, especially Sine. But it turned out great, one of my best trips. But never in a million years will I ever tell my mom that I traveled alone to Egypt to stay with a stranger from the internet. I'm late for the party, but I really hope this one gets seen. I can't hold my laugh a while typing. Okay, so I was a teenager and I was living with my mom. She's pretty much the definition of a crazy cat lady and owns about 5 cats. One day I knocked an espresso maker and spilled coffee all over the kitchen. I was already in a hurry, so I had no time to clean it all up. Then, it hits me. Come here, kitty kitty kitty. I pick up an unlucky cat and dip its paws on the coffee, spilt on the floor. Once, twice, three times, making sure it was leaving footprints. For good measure I also put random stuff, pots, silverware, etc, down on the floor or knock it over. Then I get the hell out of home, and don't come back in at least 5 hours. When I get home, just as I expected, my mom blames her cats. I'm 31 now and this happened at least 15 years ago, but I will never ever tell her. And don't worry, the cats weren't punished either. Just as I expected. You have been visited by the high bandwidth husky. You will be blessed with fast browsing speeds and wide internet tubes, but only if you comment, load fast, papa. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more daily videos.